I have four children, 28 female twin daughters, Sarah and Beth, and two sons, Harry, 26 male, and Joe, 24 male. When they were around the ages of 17, 19, and 21, my husband had an affair with another woman. She got pregnant, and he left me for her. I cannot write here the devastation that caused me. I dedicated my whole life to my family. I got pregnant young, and my husband and mother-in-law guilted me into giving up my career to be a stay-at-home mom. Said it was better for the kids. So, I did. I gave all I had to them, only to be abandoned for a younger model. My kids took to their new stepmom and half-sibling right away. That hurt my feelings. I understand that they can't hate their dad for what he did to me. I don't expect them to. But to be friends with the woman he cheated on me with? That I couldn't deal with. After two years, they started calling her mom, saying it would be easier for their half-sibling. That was my final straw. I wouldn't know contact with them and block them everywhere. I had given everything I had to these kids, and they just threw me away when a better, newer option came around. I'm still no contact. Sarah is getting married and she's reached out to me on social media. She says she wants to reconcile, but I told her no. I said she has a mom and that's not me. My other kids have started messaging me calling me an a-hole. I have zero interest in reconciliation. Gently you're the a-hole. While you seem angry and bitter right now, it seems you still love your kids deep down, which might make you regret not going to Sarah's wedding. I would consider meeting up with the kids and hearing what they have to say. Maybe they regret choosing their dad over you. Then, if in the future you want to mend your relationship with your children, you and the kids could do family counseling. I'd also look into therapy for yourself to help you deal with your bitterness, resentment, and anger. Oh my God, huge you're the a-hole. Those are literally your children. I understand that it's horrible for your husband to cheat and marry the mistress, but none of that is your kid's fault. You should be happy that they aren't miserable with their dad's new wife. You need to get over yourself if you ever want to have a relationship with your kids ever again. Not the a-hole. I thought it was going to be the typical, I don't like my ex-husband's new wife story. But the moment you mentioned they started calling her mom is when you became not the a-hole. That isn't a title you can just give to anyone. I would be hurt if they started calling the woman that ruined our family mom. Sarah didn't care about you the entire time she was dating her fiancé. She's only inviting you so she can have the perfect wedding. Edit. It seems all of you are voting you're the a-hole. I accept the verdict. I will be blocking the children on social media and moving on. I'm unable to forgive them. That won't change. It's better for them to be with their dad, stepmom, than to have me in their life. I will only bring hate and negativity. I, 45 female, live with my husband, 47 male, and his daughter, 16 female, who is spoiled absolutely rotten by her dad. Her deceased mother used to be a dancer, so stepdaughter has also taken to dance, which has cost my husband plenty. We also have a room in our house which his ex used to use as an office that has been kept exactly the same since his wife died, except for the addition of her old clothes after I moved in. Stepdaughter had a dance performance recently, and her dad said she looked very beautiful, like a spitting image of her mother, which she did. I couldn't help but feel a bit jealous, especially because I'd heard stepdaughter and my sister-in-law comparing me to the ex, saying that I had no taste, etc. On our way home from the dance, I said I would like to take over the office. He said to use a guest room instead, but I said that it was smaller, when stepdaughter interrupted to say that would never happen. I told her off for being rude, and said I could do as I pleased, when she threatened to move out to live with her maternal grandparents in a different city. Husband said no one was moving out, and I could have the guest room if I pleased, but that was it. I later told him I was upset at him for undermining me in front of a child, but he said she had only agreed to the marriage on the condition that the office would be kept the same, and that it wasn't fair to her to have to get rid of her memories of her mother. I told him to stop being so indulgent with her, and she was already spoiled enough, with her full wardrobe of designer clothes, Apple gadgets, and fancy private school with her bad grades. She isn't even going to be a dancer in the future, but she still makes him pay for lessons. My husband is now upset at me. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole? You really popped off at his daughter and him about their grieving process? If there's no financial hardship, who cares if he pays for her lessons? If you hear trash comments comparing you, Tell your husband so he can support instead of internalizing it and getting jealous and starting arguments. You're the a-hole. 
His marriage didn't end in divorce. His marriage ended because his wife passed away. So please stop trying to diminish the importance of her role in his life by trying to refer to her as his ex. She is his deceased or late wife. The fact that you try to refer to his wife who passed away as his ex, like she wasn't the woman he loved before she passed away, says a lot about how jealous and insecure you are in your marriage. Being jealous of a teenage girl because her father loves her and wants to provide her with nice things and dance lessons makes me embarrassed for you. Your husband said there are other rooms in the house that you can use for your office. So the fact that you purposely want to use his late wife's office so that you can hurt his daughter and establish some sense of cruel control in this situation makes you a petty person and a horrible stepmother. I can't have any sympathy for you because you are a grown woman who is jealous of her 16-year-old stepdaughter. You are purposely trying to do things that negatively impact her out of your own jealousy and insecurity. Major, you're the a-hole. Is your ego so easily bruised? Also, she's 16, not 10. The fact that you think keeping the room as a memory of her mother has any bearing on her being spoiled or not is wild. It's strange that you told the stepdaughter off for being rude, for daring to not want a memory of her mother gone, when you seem really to be the rude one here. Getting jealous over your stepdaughter looking nice. What even is that? I have two sons, Max, 42, and Alec, 33. Alec had his first child when he was 17. Max, who was very close to Alec, told me that he wasn't using protection, and after asking Alec, he confirmed it. I was so mad at him. I told him they better either A, the baby, or give it up for adoption, because I'm not going to raise another child. They chose to keep her, Nia and begged me to help him raise her, but I didn't change my mind. Finally, he realized that he can't raise her and decided to give her up for adoption. Max adopted her. The problem started when Alec kept trying to be in Nia's life, and when she started talking, he was trying to teach her to call him dad, which really annoyed Max, and he decided to live in another city and go low contact with Alec. They returned to our city a while ago, and Alec has been trying to get back in her life, but he hasn't been able to do so. Nia is a daddy's girl, and very affectionate, and it makes Alec jealous. Last night, we were all at Max's home, and when we were all leaving, he started yelling at me and called me an a-hole for not helping him raise Nia and forcing him to give her up. Edit. Just to make it clear, since people assumed I'm their mom, I'm actually their dad. My wife passed away before all of this happened. You just seem heartless to me. That was your granddaughter, and you wanted nothing to do with her. Now you see it's not only breaking your son, her father, but it's driving a wedge between the two brothers. You have no sympathy and it's obvious you were, are, a horrible father, grandfather. It's going to be fun when you get older and wonder why your sons don't visit when you get sick. Not the a-hole. You raising your grandchildren is not your responsibility. He got a woman pregnant. It's his responsibility and the mother's. I'm assuming the mother of the child just gave up and ran off. If Alec wanted to be a father so bad, he could have kept her and raised her. Is it easy? No. But my 17-year-old sister and my 18-year-old self both got pregnant at those ages, and we managed to raise our children as teen parents without the help of our family. Our parents had the same idea. Your kid, your responsibility. We're now 29 and 31 respectively, and doing well in life, and raising great, well-adjusted kids. He had his chance to be a dad, gave it up because it was too difficult for him. That's 100% on him and him alone. Everyone sucks here, my gosh. So many mistakes were made to drive a wedge between all of your family members. Instead of working as a family to help Alec raise his child, or at the very least, let him have a good relationship with her as a close uncle, you all alienated him and stole the child he wanted. I don't understand why Max had to keep the child away from her father. I hope it was worth breaking apart your family. My dad is not a warm man at all, and not a great dad, but he does make some effort with his own kids. He adores my mom, but really doesn't seem to give a crap about anyone else. He was never the warm, affectionate type, but at least made some effort to know us. The issue is, I've been with my wife, Maddie, for six years, and he knows literally nothing about her. He has never tried to initiate a conversation with her beyond basic greetings, hasn't been very responsive when she talks to him, and basically, after six years, they are still strangers. 
I'm not convinced my mom actually likes Maddie, but she still has basic small talk with her and asks her formal questions like how's work going, what are you doing for your birthday, what are you into, etc. Maddie has told me a few times my dad makes her uncomfortable with how little he interacts with her and she feels he doesn't like her. I've explained it is nothing personal, but I've also been paying more attention to their interactions. We recently spent a weekend away with my parents, and he only spoke to Maddie once, and it was to ask what she wanted on her sandwich, and only because my mom sent him to ask. It also recently came to my attention that he doesn't even know her birthday. I confronted him, and he said he didn't marry Maddie, so what does it matter? I was pretty annoyed, and said that is weird and hurtful. I told him he needs to treat her like a human being and a family member. He said he is treating her like a human being, and he doesn't want to talk to most of them either. I finally laid down a boundary that he cannot meet our son, due in January, until he shows some basic interest in Maddie. I explained that my wife is not an incubator, and unless he can treat her like a person, he can't be around her son. My dad rolled his eyes but said okay, but my mom went crazy and said I was ruining the family and asked if this was really coming from me or Maddie. She said her own father-in-law knows nothing about her. Dumbest argument ever, as my dad has been no contact with him for decades. My siblings all agree and say I'm being crazy and should leave him alone. My mom actually told me Maddie isn't that special and we aren't entitled to my dad's interest. Not the a-hole. I have social anxiety and it's not that hard. My dad is also socially awkward and doesn't even speak very much English and still tries. Why are they placating a grown man? I get not being outgoing, but some nods, smiles, and small talk are not that hard. Not the a-hole. They're not entitled to contact with their grandchildren. If they can't respect or make an effort with Maddie, why should they get to know your child together? Not the a-hole. It's just rude and disrespectful. If you were close to him and wanted to have him see the child with you, that'd be fine. But if you don't want to, I don't see the point. I don't know how all the people voting you're the a-hole would be keen to spend a lot of time with someone who barely acknowledges they exist. You do you, but no thanks. Me, 27 female, and my brothers, 25 male, mother died when I was 10. My father eventually met and remarried our stepmom five years later. My brother never really took to our stepmom, whereas me and her are very close, and I call her my mother. When the wedding came up, my brother said if they made him go, he would make a scene. So, very reluctantly, they didn't force him to go. She hid it well, but I could tell mom was heartbroken. Our relationship took a few years to recover after that, and even then, only really because our parents pushed us to do so. Long story short, I'm engaged to my fiancé, and the wedding is in May. My brother was surprised that he never got an invitation, and called me to ask what's up. I told him it was no mistake, and that since you have a habit of not coming to the family weddings, I figured I'd save you the trouble. He hasn't said a word to me since. Our parents have been asking me to reconsider, saying it'll destroy our relationship. But if it does, that's on him. You're the a-hole. Your brother was a child and lost his mother and struggled to accept a stepmother. That is normal. Yeah, he shouldn't have said he was going to ruin the wedding, and I understand why your father decided it was best he didn't go. But you are holding this against him more than a decade later. This has been building up inside of you for all of this time? This is such an absurd overreaction that I wonder if there's more to this story. Your brother did nothing to you. You claimed your relationship recovered. From what? It was never about you. Several years ago. And then you pull this stunt seemingly out of nowhere. It's your wedding and you can invite whoever you want. But you're a spiteful, vindictive, immature, unreasonable, petty a-hole for not inviting him and making such an unnecessary, and quite frankly unfair, comment about his history of not attending family weddings. And, let me be perfectly clear, you just destroyed whatever relationship you had with your brother. This is 100% on you, not him. Unless you left out a lot of history here, you're the a-hole. It's great that you are close with your stepmom, but you don't get to dictate the relationship your brother has with her. And making a point of excluding him now is just petty and vindictive. What good do you think you're accomplishing? You're the a-hole, punishing your stepbrother for not having the same relationship with his stepmother that you do. Well done for fighting someone else's battle uninvited and, it would seem according to your stepmom, unwanted. Ruining the relationship is on you. 
You don't get to dictate how someone feels about someone else and blackmail, punishing them for not liking someone the way you do. You're selfish, self-centered, and miserable. My wife got divorced when her daughter was 16 and married me a year later. Her daughter lived with us and saw her dad on the weekends. She is now 21 and got married this weekend. Her father paid for the wedding in total and was also obviously invited to the wedding. The thing is, he assumed he would walk her down the aisle. She asked me to walk her, and I agreed weeks ago. Before the ceremony, her father came up to us when we were standing in the hallway, waiting for the music to start to walk down the aisle. She told him I am walking her, and he got very upset, said he's her dad, I'm mom's husband. She said she knows, but she already asked me. He said he is paying for the wedding. She said that doesn't give him the right to call any shots. I walked her down the aisle, and he was very upset. At the reception, he came up to me and told me that if I want to play dad, I can also pay for the wedding. Said I'm an a-hole for taking this moment away. Am I the a-hole? You're not the a-hole. However, the daughter is the a-hole. She should have made it clear, especially as she was happy to take his money. Not the a-hole. However, it was an a-hole move on the part of your stepdaughter to not let her dad know in advance. At the point it came up, right before she was to be walked down the aisle, you could hardly refuse and make a scene. She put you in this position. If anyone should pay for the wedding, it should be her. Your stepdaughter is the a-hole for not telling her father that he wasn't going to walk her down the aisle during the wedding he paid for. I find it odd that she would choose you, a guy who has only been in her life for five-ish years, over her father who raised her and paid for her wedding. Seems like you're leaving out a lot of backstory. 